It's Alyssa. And Alyssa. The subject of this video is how life imitates art. Um, it is not necessarily how art imitates life. Um, but you can see the resemblance, right? So I have a Hulu Plus subscription. Don't judge me. And I discovered that this month one of the featured movies for April is the movie Heathers. Um, unless you were a teen girl in the late 1980s or early 1990s, um, I'm guessing this is not super exciting news to you, um, but since I did happen to be a teen girl at that time in history, uh, I was super excited to see that Heathers was one of the featured movies. And so I, I watched it a, a little over a week ago for the first time in, um, in a long time. I haven't seen that movie in a while. I say this as someone who is a teen girl in the late 1980s and early 1990s that it is one of the greatest movies ever made. But no matter whether or not you agree with me on that, but watching it again from the vantage point of uh, several years and historic events down the road from when I first saw the movie, um, something occurred to me and that is that um, it's probably not a movie that would be made nowadays um, and not because of the quirkiness and weirdness. There's plenty of quirky and weird movies out there. But the school violence angle, it's a big factor. If you haven't seen the movie, it's a big part of the movie. I don't know. I don't think they would make that movie nowadays. And that kind of got me thinking because there were a lot of things. Um, school violence wasn't a thing when I was a kid. Like, we did not have, this was before Columbine. This was before, like, some of the big, you know, school shooting events that have happened, unfortunately, in recent times. We had school violence as part of our popular culture. So like the movie Heathers, for example, but also other things. Um, it immediately brought to mind the song, I Don't Like Mondays by the Boomtown Rats. And I thought this was a pretty popular song that everyone knew. And my boyfriend, who if you watched last week's video, you know is a musician and is the same age as me. He's actually like a few months older, but whatever. He had never heard the song before, which confused me. Um, I don't know how that's possible. But anyway, um, it's a great song. Musicians might not agree. But, uh, but you know, it's a, it's a fun song, I guess, but it has a disturbing... Uh, disturbing plot to it, I guess you could say, and um, I have a feeling it's not something they play very often on the radio nowadays, not just because people don't like the Boomtown Rats, but because of the subject matter of the song. Uh, if you haven't heard it, you should just, uh, you know, punch it into YouTube, and I'm sure there's there's gotta be a video for it on here. Uh, the song that came immediately to my boyfriend's mind when I was mentioning school violence and, and songs was the song Jeremy, which happened to be popular in our teen years. Um, and uh, the video especially plays up the uh, the school violence angle again. If you haven't seen it, you know, I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere. And then there was a book by, well, it's by Stephen King, but he, uh, I guess in the, the 1980s, maybe early 1990s, um, decided to write some books under the name uh, Richard Bachman. And uh, he was eventually outed, so then he you know, came out as saying, yeah, I did write these. One of the books that he wrote, this is an omnibus collection, it's the only way I have this book, um, is the book Rage, which is a great book. Um, if you haven't read it, you should read it. Um, but here's the thing, uh, Rage is out of print, and not because it's unpopular, because it was written by Stephen King, so just about everything he written, he's written is in print. Um, but he voluntarily took this book out of print because after some of the, uh, the school violence incidents that happened, there was evidence that people had read his book Rage or were inspired by it or, you know, influenced by it. Um, so he decided as like a public service to take the book out of print. Uh, he didn't go all like shadow of the wind on it, so you can still find a copy, I'm sure, um, at various used book outlets. I'm sure Amazon.com has, uh, has copies available because it was a, a mass market book. And, you know, it was a bestseller, and, and then, you know, there were omnibus collections like that that had it in it. Yeah, school violence was definitely a part of our popular culture, um, but it really wasn't a thing. It was, you know, it was something that people wrote horrifying books about, or made movies about, or wrote songs about, um, but it didn't really happen. And then, uh, it did start happening. Um, so school violence is still a part of our popular culture because of these incidents occurring, but now the, the way it's treated in popular, popular culture has changed, I think, and maybe less from the angle of someone sympathizing 
um, with the perpetrator of the violence. I, I don't know if that's necessarily true, but but you kind of see that in Rage or even in the songs in Jeremy and I Don't Like Mondays and even in um, even in Heathers to an extent. Um, so anyway, I don't really have an answer. It's just something that like has been in my head since I, I watched Heathers again um, for the first time in a long time and, and just got these ideas going and, and thinking about stuff. So I don't have an answer, just kind of being all philosophical and uh, deep thoughts this morning on how life imitates art, sometimes in scary ways. And uh, I don't know, if you have any thoughts on this, please feel free to, to share them in the comments or, or drop me an email or, or whatever. And continuing that deeply philosophical theme, here's a lunchtime poll for you. You win $5 million in the Publishers Clearinghouse sweepstakes, and the same day you learn that you've won, aliens invade the Earth and say they're going to blow it up in two days. What do you do with the money?